Hi, and welcome to Zazi Zitande Zitembe. So uh, the last time we were talking about first impressions, um, you calling the company to get a, a job interview. And of course, we said now that you've got the interview, what do you need to do to make sure that you go there and you win and you make a good impression and they want you on board like as soon as possible? So you've got an invitation to go to the interview. The first thing that you will need to think about is the company. You need to know what the company does. And regardless of what your actual job description is going to be at the company, just because you're going to be sitting in the front desk all the time, um, welcoming guests, ushering them in, just because you're going to be sitting in your office doing um, finance work does not mean that you don't need to know what the core business of the company is. So your first step is to research the company. You need to know what they do because you need to know how your role fits in with what the rest of the company does. And by saying that you need to research the company, guys, I don't mean you must go there and start reciting it to the interviewer. They know what they do in their company. So you can't say when they say, do you know anything about our company? Say, oh yes, you guys do mining and you, you can't recite it. That's not the point. The point is just to be knowledgeable. So that in a very sexy way, every now and then you can just bring that information in, making you sound knowledgeable as opposed to reciting it. I hope that makes sense. The other thing is where the interview is going to happen. There's a very common thing that happens with people being late for the interview because they got lost. Guys, it doesn't make for a good impression. You need to know where the interview is happening. Even if it means the day before you go and look, at the location make sure that okay now i know where it is tomorrow i'll be able to come here without any problems because on the day when you are now hectic when there's traffic and there's making wrong turns and every two minute counts it's not going to make a good impression to say you are late just because you were stuck in traffic or you didn't know where to go so please make a point of going to view where the place is and make sure that you're going to be able to go there um quickly the next time around and speaking about lateness you need to leave on time. On the day of the interview, it's very important that you leave home on time. There's just no excuse for being late because, you know, other than just being late and making a bad impression, you're now also flustered. You are sweating. You are dropping stuff and you've lost control of even your preparation that you did because now you're all over the place. So make sure that you wake up on time. Firstly, sleep properly the night before. No going out the night before an interview. You sleep well, sleep enough, wake up, have your cup of coffee. If you like me, you like your cup of coffee in the morning. Be settled. Go there. Get there on time. Rather wait there and be early than have to go there in a in a flush running around and, and losing all your stuff and dropping things on the floor. And now the dress code, guys. Listen, I'm not in corporate all the time anymore, so I really have had time to experiment with whatever it is that I'd like to wear. But if we are talking about a situation of an office, of corporate, you need to be very aware of your dress code. I've seen a lot of people that pitch up for interviews. You see them coming from all the way there and you're like, yo, here comes an outfit. It's no longer a person, it's an outfit coming towards you because that's like the focal point. Make sure that your outfit does not overpower you. I've always said that, yes, times are changing now. We are more accommodating. We are more cosmopolitan. But dressing conservatively is still the best way to do it when you still have to make a first impression, when you don't know what the culture of that company is yet. So your simple black pants, your simple one color top, your blazer, your simple neutral colors that are not very threatening, that are not too in your face. Stay away from the bright roses that are just all over the place. Um, stay away from the colors that, you know, where we look at you and we think, oh my goodness, that pink is very shocking. So keep to neutral colors um, until you get to know at least the culture of the company. Ladies, the makeup. I know us. We like to paint ourselves all, all sorts. We like to experiment with our lipstick and so forth. But for an interview really not the best place to be showcasing your makeup. Stick to neutrals. Stick to um, colors that flatter you, that are not in somebody's face. We still don't want a case of here comes the makeup. We want a face coming, not a whole pastel thing of makeup coming, being thrown at your face. And then there's, uh, there's something else I always think about as well when I see people walking into the office for an interview, the smell, guys. I know you love your perfume, but make sure it's not too strong. Like, don't like put the whole bottle on yourself now for the interview because you know what? Sometimes someone walks into the room and that smell just reminds you of your ex-boyfriend. That's not the place you want to be at when you go for an interview. So keep it subtle. Don't let it overpower the room because it just might take over the interview. 
So now you are there. You are waiting at reception. Speaking of that, guys, there are usually those couches at reception that they make you wait at. Avoid those couches if you can, guys. They're usually very low. And when the person eventually comes and says, um, hi, my name's John, you usually can't come out of the whole chair like this and it looks very clumsy. So if you can just wait on a chair like this when you can keep your posture and not put yourself too low on a low couch, and try and do that. They may offer you water. They may offer you coffee. If you can, stay away from anything. But water is usually a safe bet. Guys, you are going to mess the coffee on yourself because you are nervous. Stay away from things that may mess on you and get you all flustered. So if you can, just stick to water or say, I'm fine, thank you. You walk into the actual interview. You are here to make a first impression that will last. You are here to show them that what you've done in the past can help them by adding value to their company as well and taking them forward. The fact that you're looking for a job is your problem. They have their own problem. They want somebody to fill front desk and they want somebody to do it well. And that is what you are there to prove that you can do well. So the whole time you are tapping on your past experience. Every single question that is going to be thrown at you, you are going to answer with what you've done in the past and that you will take and that you will do here. All right. So um, we get about 100 calls here a day. Do you think you can be able to answer that many calls? Oh, yes. In fact, I was at front desk for the past two years and where I was, we used to receive 150 calls. I used to manage five extensions all by myself and be able to transfer the calls to the different extensions seamlessly. In fact, while I was there, I introduced a new system whereby while the people were waiting on the phone for me to pick them up, to pick the call up, we could play company information. They could get more knowledge about the products that we serve. And that way people didn't get bored of waiting and put the phone down. Now you see, you are showing them that you are a value add. You're not just a robot that answers calls, but you also think of what is happening to the customers that are waiting. You think of how to ease the pain of waiting. And that's the kind of value that you're gonna come and add here. Tell us about yourself. Guys, reciting I'm a team player, I'm a hard worker, I'm a fast learner, doesn't cut it anymore. Interviewers have heard this over and over again. And frankly, they are not convinced. They know it's rehearsed. So if you're going to say you are a team player, the first thing that you're going to need to do is to back it up. Everything that you say must be backed up. I'm a team player. Oh, you are? Yes, because actually, in my last job, I used to work all on my own, but then I realized that if I call the three guys who had nothing to do from finance, I found that they had a little bit of extra time. I called them to my team and we did the work together. It would be done faster. That shows that you are a team player. That shows that you don't just want to take all the credit by yourself. But when you have an opportunity to, you call other people to come and help you. I'm a fast learner. Uh-huh. Tell us about that. Well, when I... Uh, walked into my last company they were using uh, the CRM system called SAP and I had never used that system before I went on training for two days and by the end of the first week I was using it by myself that's the kind of thing that you say to back up what you're saying so you don't just make a claim I'm a team player I'm a hard worker I'm a fast learner without saying anything to back it up okay so the other thing that you always need to remember in an interview is that you are there to sell your achievements. A lot of people are very uneasy with bragging. They're like, oh, I don't want to seem like I'm... Guys, an interview is the time to brag. What you don't tell them, they will not know. So if you have saved your past company time, in a way, by introducing a new system that made things e easier and quicker, you need to tell them that. If you have made your past company money, you need to tell these people that. I don't just sit there and do what I'm assigned to do, but I make you money while I'm doing it because I think of other things that we can tap, tap into. If you've, uh, if you've increased productivity, I was in a manufacturing plant where we used to make 100 juices and by the time I was done with them, we were making 150 an hour. You better make sure they know about that because that that is what makes you better than the next person. And that is why when they ask you, why do you think you are the best person for this job? You better be ready with like a whole page of your bragging work of what you've done in your previous companies. Something that can be trackable, something that can be verifiable, something that can be measurable. It needs to be measured. How much time did you save? How much money did you make? By how much did you improve productivity? So it has to be measurable. It can't just be soft things like everybody liked me. Frankly, nobody cares, guys. You need measurable things. That is the reason companies take one person over the other and then the money story comes 
how much would you like us to pay you salary yo guys that is a dilemma that is a conundrum because you now don't want to go in too low because you're thinking what well, what if they have more and i'm busy saying this low amount and that's what i end up with but at the same time you're thinking if i go too high these guys are gonna run away and then i could have gotten this job and then gonna think i'm too expensive and they're not going to take me on board so you're kind of stuck somewhere you don't know quite what the price is that you should be um asking for um i'll tell you what i used to do from my personal experience i personally used to go the route of well i have told you what i have done in the past i've told you of what value i've added i've told you what value i can add by being in this position in your own company i'll kind of let you assess what you think i'm worth in money terms but i do believe that a market related increase in any company is about 25 percent from where i am so if you're able to offer me that that would be nice the other way that you can go is to give them more than one figure so if you know that let's say for example really really you want 250,000 then you'd go something like well um i would accept 230,000 i would accept that at a push that is sort of my bottom line i would be happy happier with 280,000 uh because that sort of would make sure that i'm able to cover everything that i need to cover but i would be ecstatic, ecstatic if you did 320 then i'd really be happy I'd close everything, I'd no longer look around, I'd be happy and I'd settle for a very long time. Companies want someone who would settle for a very long time, so they might just try to give you the 320. So give them three figures because that gives them a place to work with. So give them your bottom line under which you just will not accept because anything under 230 will not even cover my expenses, so I cannot accept it. But 280 is kind of okay. I'll accept that and it will kind of cover my expenses. But 320... 320 I'll be like the happiest person ever and I'll stay in your company that is basically what you're saying to them and you want them hopefully to go with that number that will make sure that you stay there so oh yes one last thing that I think of they might give you the opportunity to ask questions guys please don't come up with like 10 questions as if you're now doing the interview it's really a turn off because it really means it's somebody who wants to upstage people it's somebody who really one or two questions prepare and make sure that it's questions that need to be asked because if you come and ask things that you could have just looked up on the website again you look ignorant it's okay to say no you've covered everything that i had in mind i'm fine thank you but if you do have one question about maybe how the company has improved in their performance over the last five years something that makes you sound intelligent guys but if you don't have questions you're fine but please don't come with 10 if you really have questions, you can just go and research. Google has all the answers for you. So, yeah, I hope that helps you somewhat. And um, as long as you remember that you are there to show them what value you can add. So bragging is a good thing. Bragging is necessary. In fact, bragging about your past achievements will get you the job. All the best. And until next time, from myself, Lusanda Mbane, this was Zazi Zitande Zitembe. <laughs>